JBN, we keep you informed. Chadwin Park Rogue Cops remanded. Alleged Rogue Cops, Corporals Kirk Fraser and Ramon Scott, were remanded in custody when they appeared in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston today. The policemen are charged with three counts of illegal possession of firearm and ammunition and one count each of murder, manslaughter and shooting with intent. Allegations are that shortly after midnight on April 28, Fraser Scott and a third policeman, later identified as Corporal Rowan Williams, fatally shot St. Catherine resident Sheldon Juna Biggs Daly during a party at Shedding Park, which is located on the outskirts of Spanish Town. They then fled the scene in a Nissan wagon motor car. According to reports, an off duty policeman who witnessed the incident challenged the three men who shot Daly, unaware that they were his colleagues. They were chased by the off-duty cop through the streets of the old capital. The high-speed gunfight ended when the Nissan motor car collided with another vehicle at the intersection of Brunswick Avenue and Job Lane. When the dust cleared, Williams and Kevron Burrell, a visitor to the island, and who was the passenger in that car, were pronounced dead. Attorney at law, Queen's Counsel Valerie Nita Robertson, who is representing Fraser, made an application for a gag order to be placed on the media. However, presiding judge Justice C. Brown Beckford said the application was premature. Meanwhile, Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn told the court that a number of documents are not ready, among them post-mortem and ballistic reports, as well as a report from the police's communication, forensics, and the cybercrime division on the phone seized from Scott. A statement from the superintendent of police in charge of St. Catherine, another from a locksmith, and a forensic report on DNA matter found on firearms are also outstanding. The matter is set for mention on July 2. Mother of five charged with production of child porn. Detectives assigned to the Center for the Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sisoka, are today clarifying that a five-year-old boy who has been purported to be missing in several social media reports in recent days is not missing. The police's Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, in a media release said the child was placed into state care after an investigation carried out by the detectives revealed that the child's mother was guilty of several offenses under the Child Care and Protection Act. He remains under the care of the government and is said to be in good health, the CCU said. The police's information arm said investigation into the child's circumstances was launched on Wednesday, May 15. When a concerned citizen visited the Sissoka headquarters with the boy and made a complaint, the child's mother was implicated in the investigation and was subsequently arrested and later charged. The mother was being identified as 27 year old Raphaelia Roberts of Newark Avenue, Kingston 11, has been charged with cruelty to a child, production of child porn, and distribution of child porn. Jamaican and four others plead guilty in U.S. fake marriage scam. A Jamaican man is among five people who have pleaded guilty in federal court in Connecticut to their roles in a fraudulent marriage scheme designed to get non-citizens U.S. immigration benefits. The U.S. Attorney for Connecticut says 36-year-old Carl Jarrett of Bridgeport entered his plea Thursday and was the final of the five defendants to do so. The others pleaded guilty over the last few months. The others were identified as 44-year-old Dwight Henry a citizen of Jamaica living in New York City, 60-year-old Marvin Williams of New York City, 39-year-old Ricky Owen of Bridgeport, and a 35-year-old Kennel Noel of Bridgeport. All of them entered into at least one marriage in an attempt to get non-citizens green cards or, in Henry's case, get a green card for himself. Williams was involved in four fraudulent marriages. Labor killed at cook shop in Mandeville. Guns barked at a cook shop on Smoky Street in Mandeville, Manchester on Friday night. When the smoke cleared, a man was dead. He has been identified as 23-year-old Javon Mary, a laborer of a Kingston address. The Mandeville police reported that Mary went to the small eatery to purchase a cup of soup. While being served, he was pounced upon by a group of gunmen. Mary was peppered with bullets and slumped to the ground. The attack sent staff at the cook shop and other patrons scampering for cover and the gunmen fled the scene. Mary died on the spot. Children ran away from home because of sex, hype, lifestyle and abuse. Found of here the children's cry, Betty and Blaine, 
has said that many children run away from home because of various factors, such as abuse, the allure of sex, and the desire to obtain things that their parents cannot afford to provide for them. At the same time, Blaine is insisting that the systematic failure by parents to address concerns that the errant children have, most of which stem from within the home, are also serious contributing factors that should be urgently addressed. More than 1,512 children were reported missing according to data from the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The data shows a 3 to 1 ratio in the number of girls who were reported missing last year, 1,164 compared to 348 boys. Of this number, 155 girls and 31 boys are still missing. One boy and four girls were reported dead. Since January 2019, the trend has not slowed. Up to April 30, police statistics show that 413 girls and 104 boys have been reported missing, with 126 girls and 26 boys still unaccounted for. Two girls were reported dead. Children are going missing at the rate of one every six hours or four per day. Here the Children's Cry is Jamaica's only voluntary organization providing advocacy for child abuse, child safety, and other issues. These children are leaving home because of the abuse, sexual, physical, verbal, and emotional. Some are leaving home, I believe, because of the poor living standards there. In some instances, poverty is a big issue, and lots of them are leaving with friends because they tend to believe the grass is always greener elsewhere, she said. Blaine said, however, that there were many parents whose stories was that their teens, mostly girls, were uncontrollable. She said that these parents have complained that their children have resisted instructions while insisting to be left alone to attend parties. We are also hearing this from a lot more parents. Now that the children are running away from home for sex because they are involved in sexual relationships with either peers or with adult males. So that's a huge problem. We have so many cases of girls who have gone missing and who returned pregnant. We are working with several of these children right now, said Blaine. She revealed a growing trend in which children leave home for school on a Friday morning, taking civilian clothing in their bags and do not return until Sunday evening. We are, however, of the view that this problem of missing children can be solved if we can provide parents with the kind of support that they need to teach them how to better communicate with their children and to better supervise the errant ones, noted Blaine. Information from a police source points to a certain time of the year when there is a significant increase in the number of children who go missing. According to the source, the major increase comes during the annual Boys and Girls Athletics Championships. If you have champs going on, that's when we realize the number of children reported missing spikes. The same trend is noticed every year for the past few years around February 14, Valentine's Day, and of course during the summer holidays, the source said. Cops probing murder of customer service rep Blacks in St. Anne. Police investigators in St. Anne are on the hunt for those responsible for the chopping death of a customer service representative in Alexandria in the parish on Thursday night. The deceased man has been identified as 40-year-old Derek Ward, alias Blacks of Alexandria. Reports are that about 9 p.m., Ward was walking along a roadway in the community when he was pounced upon and chopped several times by an unknown assailant or assailants. Residents who heard Ward's cries for help went to investigate, and on their arrival, the victim was found with several chop wounds to his head. The police were alerted and he was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations continue into the incident. Crooks arch elaborate card fraud schemes. Even as credit and debit card fraud increases in Jamaica, incidence of the crime is massively underreported. With a banking anti-fraud expert's educated estimate of 5,000 victims a year being almost tenfold the 551 reported to the police fraud squad in 2018, the industry is finding it increasingly difficult to curb electronic fraud in Jamaica with schemers graduating from inserting reading and skimming devices in ABMs to paying sales clerks at merchant outlets as little as $10,000 daily to lift information from customers' debit or credit cards. We know that in the case, especially of a debit card, 
if they capture your information and they use it to create a clone of your card, that by itself cannot be used to gain access to your account. They will need your PIN. But they also have means and ways of capturing your PIN, said Lloyd Parchment, a fraud prevention manager. Parchment also co-chairs the Jamaica Bankers Association Anti-Fraud Committee. Sales clerks are equipped with skimming devices that capture information at a swipe. These devices can store the information of about 3,000 customers in a given day. When customers let their guard down, extracting the PIN or personal identification number is even easier to be captured. You can't just look at somebody and say, oh, that person looks honest. You can't do that anymore. Recognizing what is happening in the environment, you have to mistrust everybody. So at the restaurant, at the gas station, at the supermarket, Parchment said. We had cases recently where pizza delivery bike riders were tendering a device to you when you seek to pay for your pizza that you order and they deliver. They tender a device to you which looks like the ordinary point of sale pin pad or the ordinary point of sale POS machine and it turned out it is a fraudulent device that is capturing your card information and your PIN, he explained. The use of dummy POS machines to skim customers' information is a rising and a troubling trend, Parchment said. Typically, how it operates is that if you go to a restaurant or wherever and there is a collusive staff and you tender them the card and they give you this machine, they swipe the card and ask you to enter your PIN. You enter your PIN and of course it won't work in terms of conducting the transaction because it is a dummy. It is not connected to the bank's network at all, but it captures the information, he said. The anti-fraud squad said that sales clerks generally suggest that the POS machine is not connecting and offer to try another one. That is just to lull you into a false sense of security because you don't realize that something has taken place, he said. According to statistics obtained from the Jamaica Constabulary Force Fraud Squad, Point-of-sale fraud was the second most prevalent type of electronic fraud committed locally in 2018. ABM fraud was the most common. It has been happening a lot and it still continues to happen. What the fraudsters start to do now is that instead of buying them online and bringing them, them in, they are going around and stealing the bank's mobile point-of-sale machines and rigging them, Parchment said. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, like, subscribe, share, Leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.